In this video, we're going to look at <coughs> some diff trigonometric functions and we're going to differentiate quite a lot of them. You can see here, I've put a lot into this video just to get really good at differentiating anything with trig. So let's have a look at sine 3x. So we differentiate the function and then differentiate the angle. So sine 3x goes to cos 3x and we multiply by 3 and we'd always put the 3 in front. So 3 cos 3x. Now we could do it, we can differentiate the angle now first because you know what to do. So we're differentiating the angle 4 and cos 4x goes to minus sine 4x. So I'm put the minus in front, minus sine 4 sine 4x. This one we're going to have a 5. Tan 5x goes to sec squared 5x. So we get 5 sec squared 5x. Mm. Well, if we differentiate the hang angle here, we're going to get 3. Sine goes to cos, so 3 cos 3x plus 4. This 8x minus 2 is going to become 8. Cos goes to minus sine, so minus 8 sine 8x minus 2. Tan goes to sec squared, we have a 3, so 3 sec squared 3x plus 4. Now the five goes to five x goes to five, so we have five times, and sine goes to cos two, cos five x, so that in fact is going to give me ten, five times two, ten cos five x. Similarly in this one four, three cos four x, cos goes to minus sine, so we have minus four times three sine four x, so we're going to get minus twelve, sine. 4x. So just practice a lot of these and then they won't hold any fear. They kind of are fearful for all students when they see them first. So let's have a look at a few more. Sine 5x. So the 5x becomes a 5. Sine goes to cos. 5 cos 5x. 3 cos 3x. The 3x goes to 3. And 3 cos 3x goes to minus. I should really put the minus in the front. Minus. 3 sine 3x. So we're going to get minus 9 sine 3x. The 5 here goes in front and 7 tan 5x goes to 7 sec squared 5x. So in this one we're going to end up with 35 sec squared 5x. This is two parts but we just do them the same with the plus sign. Or it could be a minus sign. So the three x goes to three, and two sine three x goes to two cos three x. So this one becomes six cos three x. Now the two x goes to two cos goes to minus sign. So five cos two x is going to become five sine two x. So we end up with six cos three x minus ten sine 2x tan 2x plus tan 3x 2x goes to 2 tan 2x goes to sec squared 2x and similarly this is going to become 3 sec squared 3x on to the next ones bringing in the chain rule so all with powers in them. So we bring the 3 in front, it becomes 3 sine squared x. And then we differentiate the function without the power. Sine x goes to cos x, cos x. So 3 sine squared x, cos x. Similarly with this one, we get 2 cos x. And cos x goes to minus sine x. So I'm going to put the minus in front and write the sine x after. This one goes to 4 tan cubed x and um, differentiation tan x we get sec squared x sine to the power of 5x is 5 sine to the power of 4x sine x goes to cos x so 5 sine to the power of 4x cos x this one becomes 6 cos to the power of 5x and cos x goes to minus, put it at front, sine x. 7 tan to the power of 6x. 
and tan x goes to sec squared x. Now this one has an angle inside, so we would have been differentiating these one x's to be one, it wouldn't have affected the answer. But in this case, what we're gonna have is the three step process, three sine squared two x, then we multiply by our two, which is the differentiated angle, and then sine two x goes to cos two x. So this one, we can tidy it up with the three and the two, six sine squared two x, cos two x. This one here is gonna to go to two cos three x times three, and cos three x goes to minus sine three x. So we have minus six cos three x sine three x. This one, four tan cubed five x times four, and tan five x goes to sec squared five x. So we end up with 16 tan cubed 5x sec squared 5x. This one, 5 sine to the power of 4, 3x times differentiated angle. Actually, do I? I'm just spotting an error here. I wrote a 4 here. It should be a 5. Just looking at the 4, easy to, when you're doing them one after another, to start seeing the wrong numbers, so that's gonna be a 20. I'm just looking back on your answers is important. So five, the next one, five, sine to the power of four, three x times three, times sine three x goes to cos three x. So we end up with 15, sine to the power of four, three x, cos three x. Just move across for this one. We're gonna get six cos to the power of five, four x times four, and cos four x goes to minus sine four x. So we're gonna have minus 24, cos to the power of five, four x, sine four x. Moving back across. This is acute. No, actually, it's an eight. I put it as an eight. Eight. So eight tan to the power of seven two x. You get the drift at this point. Times two, and tan two x goes to sec squared two x. So we're going to get sixteen tan to the power of seven two x sec squared two x sine squared x goes to two sine x and sine x goes to cos x we will start seeing this a little bit more two sine x cos x is actually equal to the sine of two x in the tables so you could use that and in one of the questions in this video we're going to have sine x cos x so that would be equal to sine two x over two which helps us in some questions where there's trig identities tan squared x is two tan x by sec squared x and cos to the power of three five x becomes three cos to the power of two five x times five just moving across and cos x goes to minus sine x so minus sine five x so we're going to get minus 15 cos squared five x sine five x and just some additions done the same way so we're going to get 2 sine 2x times 2 sine 2x goes to cos 2x so this one's going to be 4 sine 2x cos 2x plus well is it going to be a plus it's going to be a minus isn't it here cos squared 3x goes to 2 cos 3x times 3 and cos x goes to minus sine x, so cos 3x goes to minus sine 3x, so minus 6 cos 3x sine 3x. So hopefully with this last one of these, you're getting the idea. 4 tan cubed 3x, tan 3x goes to sec, oh, forgot to multiply by the 3, 3x times 3 times sec 
squared 3x. That's going to give me 12 tan cubed 3x sec squared 3x plus another pluses here. We're going to get, you should see if this one here gave 12, this one here is going to give 20. So let's have a look. 5 tan to the power of 4, 4x by 4 by sec squared 4x, 20 tan to the power of 4, 4x, sec squared 4x. So let's go and have a look at a couple of different types of questions they can ask in relation to this. The function f of x cos x is defined for all element, x is an element of real numbers. Find f prime x and hence find the equation of the tangent f of x is equal to x cos x at the point and we're just given the x value here to get the y value i got to put this back into my original function because f of x is the same as y equals so to get the equation of a tangent y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1 we need the slope which is f of x at this point over here and we need an x value and a y value so let's see how to go about doing that so we're using the product rule here x cos x so we'll write it out again I've told you before to write down the differentiated components first. Cos x goes to minus sine x and x just goes to 1. So f prime x following our rules. The first by the second differentiated plus the second by the first differentiated. So we're going to get minus x sine x plus cos x. So if I put a value in for x, that'll give me the slope of this at any point you know it might look a bit neater just to write cos x minus x sine x if you choose to have the minus in the middle so what have we got here 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees we could use our unit circle here if you want not to have to use a calculator 270 is down here the point 0 minus 1 cos and sine of 270 cos of 0 sine is minus 1 so the cos put the values in anyway it's in radians 3 pi over 2 minus x times well x is 3 pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 2 times the sine of x which is going to give us a plus 3 pi over 2 the sine of 3 pi over 2 so if this is going to be 0 this one now we're going to have minus 3 pi over 2 times minus 1 so the slope of this function at this point is 3 pi over 2. So then we have the slope, we have the m part. So we have our x part, we just need our y part. So here's my function again, I'll write it out again. We're looking for f of 3 pi over 2. And the function is equal to x cos x. Now we've actually gotten cos of 3 pi over 2 already. We've seen that it's equal to 0 here. So this is going to be 3 pi over 2 times 0, which is equal to 0. So that's my y value. So my point is 3 pi over 2, 0. And my slope is also 3 pi over 2. So the equation of this line is y minus 0 is equal to 3 pi over 2 times x minus 3 pi over 2. And that's going to give me y is equal to 3 pi over 2 times x, or 3 pi x over 2 minus, well, I could write 9 pi squared over 4, 9 pi squared over 4, or for 9 pi, I could just write, if you wanted to leave this 3 pi over 2 to be squared, I'm sure that would be fine too. You're showing what you're doing. So this is the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point 3 pi over 2. If we're asked to differentiate functions like secant x, cosecant x, or cotan x, um, these are given to us in the tables, but not the differentiated versions of them. So what we have to do is we have to turn them into sine or cos. And in the tables, it tells us that secant x is equal to 1 over cos x. So if f of x is equal to 1 over cos x, I could write it as cos x to the minus 1, but we're going to use the quotient rule here. Differentiate the top, we get 0. Differentiate the bottom, we get minus sine x. So that quotient rule tells us to have on the bottom, the bottom squared, cos x, 
to be squared. And on top, we have the bottom cos x by the top differentiated minus the top, which is 1, by the bottom differentiated. And you can see here we're going to end up with sine x, just sine x over cos squared x or cos x to be squared. Yeah, let's even simplify this further. Sine x on top and on the bottom, cos x by cos x. If I put a 1 here, we can see there's now two different parts to this. Sine over cos is equal to tan, so that's tan x. And 1 over cos x back to up here is secant x. So this becomes tan x secant x. That's the answer to the first one. If I look at the second one, we're looking at cosecant x. And cosecant x in the tables is 1 over sine x. So 1 over sine x, if we use the quotient rule on the bottom, we're going to have the bottom to be squared. Again, differentiate each. Sine x goes to cos x and 1 goes to 0. So on top we have the bottom by the top differentiated plus the top by the bottom differentiated. So I'm going to end up with cos x over sine x sine x. I'll write it like this. Obviously that's not a plus, that's a minus in the middle. Just checking back. So let's have a look here how we can simplify this. Cos x over sine x. Let's, let me start with sine x over cos x is equal to tan x. Now that would be tan x over 1. And because they're fractions, we could say that cos x over sine x is equal to 1 over tan x. And 1 over tan x is cotan x. So I can change this to cotan x. I'm just going to put that minus in. We also know that 1 over sine x, and this is given to you in the tables, 1 over sine x, I think it's on page 7, 1 over sine x is cosecant x, cosec x. And cotan is just written, that's C-O-T, but I was saying, I was spelling it the way I was see, saying it, if I can speak anymore. So what do we end up with here? We end up with minus cos over sine, which is cotan x, and 1 over sine, which is cosec x x. So this is the answer to this one. Now I'm going to look at cotan x, which again I wrote as cotan x. Cotx will do fine. So let's look at f of x is equal to cotan x. So this is equal to 1 over tan x. Or as we've seen just before, it's equal to the opposite of tan x. So it's cos x over sin x. So cos x goes to minus sin x sine x goes to cos x the quotient rule tells me to square the bottom sine x to be squared take the bottom sine x and multiply it by the top differentiated which is minus sine x not a plus in the middle like before so minus the top by the bottom differentiated which is cos x by cos x so we're going to get minus sine squared x minus cos squared x over sine squared x. Yeah, we know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1, so I think I can take a minus out here and say sine squared x plus cos squared x inside the bracket over sine squared x. So that's going to give me a minus 1 on top, or a minus in front, over sine squared x. Now, sine squared x, sine x, is equal to uh, cosec x, 1 over sine x. So if I write that down, 1 over sine x is equal to cosecant x. So if I had sine squared x, 1 over sine squared x is cosecant squared x. So that minus can stay in front. We're going to get minus cosecant cosec squared x. And that's going to be our answer to this one. So these are probably a little bit trickier because you're looking at trig identities again. You may not have done a huge amount of trig identities with these cosecants and cotans. So practice these three definitely for leaving Cert 2021. Okay, in this question, 
we're given this graph the graph of the function f of x equal to cos x sine x between 0 and 2 pi show f prime x is equal to cos 2x okay so the product rule first differentiated is minus sine x second differentiated is cos x so f prime x is going to be the first cos x by the second differentiated which is cos x and then plus the second which is sine x by the first differentiated which is minus sine x so we're going to end up with cos squared x minus sine squared x and on the tables just check the page number in the double angle formula the first one is cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a which equal to cos 2a so that's that one proven there's a bit of an awkward part two and three here part two hence find the equation of the tangent to this curve y is equal to f of x at x is equal to 11 pi over 8. so you got to put that back into the original f of 11 pi over 8 this will give us our y value so it's going to be the cos it might be easier this is where it's actually easier to use a trig identity the trig identity the one underneath cos 2a now you might if you had your tables open you might see the one underneath says sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a and our function is cos x sine x so to get my cos x sine x on its own i'd have to say sine 2a divided by 2 is equal to sine a cos a so a manipulation of a trig identity within one of these calculus questions is tricky i think for for students to kind of see so i had tried that putting this in to the original function and we do end up getting a decimal so i think we can get a third by putting it into this here so if we put in f of 11 pi over 8 into sine 2a over 2 we're going to get well like just i'll get the sine of 2a first the sine of twice 11 pi over 8 is equal to the sine of 11 pi over 4. now pi over 4 is equal to 45 degrees which we know works out to be 1 over root 2 but the pi pi over 8 is 22.5 degrees which just gives us a decimal so this question required a bit of thought before finally getting to the answer so we could use our unit circle here or we could just just type this into a calculator 11 by 45 divided by 4 is 4 9 5 Don't need four, I've already accounted for that. So it's eleven by forty-five. The pi over four is your forty-five. So eleven forty-five is our four nine five. And the sine of four nine five is one over root two. It's one of your forty-fives in that sine sector. So the sine of eleven pi over four becomes one over root two. Therefore, the sine of two of them over two is equal to one over two root two. So this is my y value so my point now becomes 11 pi over a for x and 1 over 2 root 2 for y and did we get our slope we got the function so we haven't got our slope yet so we're looking at the cos of 2a for my differentiated function so the cos of twice 11 pi over 4 sorry 11 pi over 8 is equal to the cos of the same angle that we had here 11 pi over 4 now let's just see in a circle it's 495 all the way around to 360 and then 450 so it's in here it's my 45 degree angle in here and we can see the cos is negative in here so the cos of 11 pi over 4 is minus 1 over root 2 so this is my slope and I have my point so the equation in this line y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 is equal to y minus 1 over 2 
root 2 is equal to minus 1 over root 2 times x minus 11 pi over 8. We simplify to get y on its own. y is equal to minus 1 over root 2, not root x, root 2 times x, this guy and this guy, plus 11 pi over 8 times 8 root 2, 11 pi over 8 root 2, and then we're going to have this one here brought across plus 1 over 2 root 2. Now I could probably factor these constants. There's a 1 over root 2 in both of them. So let me just do that to tidy it up. Minus 1 over root 2 times x plus there's a 1 over root 2 in both. I don't think there's anything else. 1 over root 2. And that would leave inside the bracket 11 pi on top and 8 on the bottom to give me 11 pi over 8 root 2 plus I'd have to have 1 over 2 to give me 1 over root 2 times 1 over 2 to give me this. So this is the end of this question. A nice tricky question to finish trigonometric functions with calculus.